Hello, Sheena Douglas here again with the promised um, video of how to make some books using your faux leather, which you've all been playing with, and um, a jolly good thing too. So, we're going to, in this video, show you how to transform um, this, which is what you've probably got there ready and waiting. And if you haven't, look at the faux leather video on my YouTube channel and you'll see how to make this using craft cord and glycerine. And um, so this is what we should have. You've got ready and waiting. I would imagine if you, if you're like me, I had about 50 drying all over the house before I continued. Um, and what we're going to do is transform it from that into one of these really pretty little notebooks. Um, and we're going to sew those little signatures in there, these pages. Um, and you can see this is um, using my Country Lane folder. Now, if you're looking at any of the things that you need or any you want links to where to get any of this stuff, as usual, if you go to sheena.tv, you'll see galleries, um, you'll see links to my videos, and you'll see a link to where you can get the products you need. So um, that's an example there, which I like the really dark blue. And this was just using a different different colour um, distress inks and some Adirondacks. And look at this, cool little fastening. I had a play, a couple of play days with um, my friend and chief ink guide Fiona Clayton, and um, she came up. We were looking at how to make a little easy tie for the books, and she came up with this cute little idea here, which I think is really cool. And it's just using a little bit of elastic. It, it's separate, so then you can use it with any of your other notebooks, which I like. So it's not stuck to the book. You can just use it for future ones, which I think is really a good idea. So I'll show you how to do that. So that's more of a natural tan look. We've got more of a red using some other different coloured inks again. Um, I did use some more um, Adirondack inks on this. And if you look at my website, I'll try and think of the colours and I'll write it down there. Because right now, I can't remember them. And then a different one using one of my Oriental embossing folders. This is the um, the maple, maple leaf embossing folder, the A4. And as you can see, another cute little notebook. And then, taking it further, oh, looky what I have here. How cool, I love, I've got, I've had, I am so happy with this. Um, things to know about me, I have had iPad 1, iPad 2, iPad 3. I now have a Samsung, but I treasure my tablets. And I have paid stupid money for posh leather covers for them. And I have many that are sitting in the house now because I've moved on and um, they don't fit my Samsung. And I've searched for a cover that would look leather-esque. And so I couldn't find one, so I had to make one. So check this out. Now, I'm not going to do this in this video, but I'm trialling this one. I've been using it for four days solid. And another thing to know about um, moi is that I don't go food shopping without my tablet. It literally goes everywhere. I will not leave the house without my tablet. So as you can see, I've got a nice padded grey felt interior here. And this, even though it looks like leather, is your full leather craft card. How cool is that? So, you know, that's something else, to another way to, uh, somewhere to take it. But that will be another video because I want to come back and tell you how durable it is after I've tested it for a bit. Okay, let's get cracking with these books. So, apart from the needle and thread, which we'll come to in a minute, um, the two things you're going to need is some small patterned cotton fabric. So you know the stuff you get in fat quarters? I went to my local um, craft shop and just really inexpensive, like under two quid for each of these patterns. Um, and they're perfect, so now I'm collecting fabric. If I could sew, that would be even more exciting, but I'm going to have to look at some of your videos to learn how to do more of that. Thank you very much. So, But this is what I've got fabric ready. And also, you're going to need, I've tried other glues, I've tried Pebio mediums, and um, none of them stick like this stuff. This is the Colal Tacky Glue. This is, this is fantastic glue. This is so strong. It's thick, it's, it's gloopy, you'll see how good it is. So if you want instant grab and instant fix, and you're not just, you're not just binding a pretty liner to your faux leather, what you're going to do with this glue and the fabric is, is strengthen it and reinforce it. So what you need to do, is when I show you how to glue this next, is to make sure that every surface of this is bonded to that fabric. Hence giving it, making it much more than just a piece of cord. It's then going to strengthen it, the glue strengthening it, it's getting into the cord and it's going to last and last. So right, now, 
So that's what you've done. That's what you need, sorry. What I have ready is I've cut a piece of my fabric larger because I have um, got a couple, tried a couple, and got not started putting them on straight, and then I'm a little bit short, and then you've ruined it. So you're best off, if you look, just measure around your fab, your um, four leather cover and just make it a bit bigger, just by eye. I uh, don't do measuring, as you'll find in this tutorial. So, this is how we're going to start. Now, I'm going to need another thing, is some way of spreading this fabric out. And I'm just going to pause for a second while I go and grab mine, and I'll show you what I mean. So, the ideal set for doing this, believe it or not, is something like this, a slice set, because in there you have a spreader. Now, you should have, I've lost mine, it goes there. Don't know where it's gone so alternatively i found this all you need is something rigid and um, even a, an old credit card will do and what it's going to do is just smooth your fabric onto your glue you'll see how i'm going to use it now so rather than try and do this all in one bit because the glue is going to start to dry do it in like maybe quarters to start off with especially under these lights now, my applicator is going to be my finger. This is tacky glue and it'll just peel off. It's not like super glue where it's going to bond to your skin or it's going to hurt when you remove it. It'll just rub off. So, tacky glue, get it so that it's working towards the nozzle. And then you want to put a fair amount on, especially around the sides, because that's where it's going to dry first. Okay, let's start with that. So I'm going to take my finger, look, and I'm just massaging, pushing it over the surface. I might even get that to go down a little bit further. Right over into the whole surface of my um, faux leather. And then right up to the corners. Try not to get it all over the, the, um, the mat you're working on because you might get it on the front of your cover. I have before, but because it's a clear PVA, when it dries you can't really see it. So it's not a major problem. Um, unless there's other nasty bits get stuck to it which sometimes happen to us crafty types so can you see that's right across to this to the edges now before it starts to dry you don't want it so that it's in puddles because it'll squelch through the fabric lay the fabric flat and then get your little squeegee thing whatever you're using your old credit card your spreader your um you know the things that you get for your um die cutting um electronic die cutting when you've got to get the stuff off the off the sticky mats that kind of thing is perfect. Not the metal one though. Excellent. So we've got it bonded perfectly. And then I'm just going to drag that back. Now when you do this, see you're going to pull a little bit of the cord. So be careful. That's okay if you pull a little bit and it gets a bit pulpy. Because we can put more um, glue down there. So a little bit more again. And I really would, if you can, stock up on this glue. If you can find another good, strong PVE, then fine. But like I say, I know this one works great. And you don't want to spend the time doing this and not have it bonded properly. Because that, like I say, is going to offer its strength and um, make it last longer. Going to get right into that um, the cord, which is your craft cord, your faux leather and really bond it well to your fabric which is really what you need if you're going to strengthen it not just line it in a pretty fashion so again just squidge that over there you know when I'm using paper I'm kind of in my element I, I have no fear with paper and cord fabric however whole other ball game it's an alien substance to me I have a sewing machine that actually has just seen electricity because I made my um, tablet cover in um, a year since I bought it. That's pretty sad. I should probably say no more. Right, so there you go. Right to the edge. So you haven't used a ridiculous amount, but you have got it bonded right across like this. That's important, that you miss no bits out. If you think it's dry a little bit there, just push that up a little bit. And then... Now again, what I like to do is pop this over the radiator. If you lift it up, hopefully we haven't got anything major on the front. Nope, I think we're good. Have a check around the edges, just in case. Now, normally I would wipe this down, but I can't find my, my um, kitchen paper. Just have a look and see if you've got any bits that have frayed or split or need strengthening. Because that's important that you, you fix them now. See there where the cords kind of like split. This this sample is one I've actually been carried, carrying around with me um, 
for t on TV and things, and it's been in my crafty stash. So it has seen a little bit of, um, you know, rough wear and tear before it was protected by bonding onto the fabric. But you know what? Still looks great. So that's that's what you've got to do. Just make sure the edges are really well sealed. That now I'll pop over the radiator, and it'll only take an hour or so. You know, to make sure it's really fully dry and bonded. And if you just hang it over like that, if you haven't got a radiator, just put it in front of some, you know, in this in the window, in the sun, whatever, just to get some heat on it. In fact, probably best it that way up. And then you're ready for the next stage, which I'm going to show you now. Here's what I made earlier. Um, as you can see, it looks it looks fab, doesn't it? It looks like nice tan leather. And oh, how pretty! the fabric on the inside and you can see now it's really you can feel they've really bonded together well there's no way there's little bubbles or anything in there that's completely completely sealed which is going to offer the strength I, I want I'm looking for especially if you're going to make something more than even your books with them now what I want to do is I've got my fabric scissors I've got all the kit just haven't really cranked it up yet and I'm carefully going to trim along that line I'm trying not to cut the paper because I don't want to blunt my scissors um, because paper is terrible for blunting yet nice push fabric scissors right so I've cut a line there but that's all that's going to serve now is serve as my leading line I don't know if you can see this but maybe with the cameraman's um, I'll wait for the heads up this will actually cut through both believe it or not with your, if you, you need a guillotine to me that's easier than trimming through the both and that's why Look, say perfect and you get a gorgeous now you can straighten up if it's gone a bit wrinkly or anything I've even tried the smaller one you know the not the massive one that the, the um, E4 size um, X cut guillotine and that works great as well but you do need to give it you know I don't I'm not trimming loads off I don't want it to make it much smaller I just want to and I'm pulling the blade in Ooh, hello troublesome little tight that bit there you go and then I'm going to finish where I started because that wasn't straight even that straight I had to cut it up to there with the um, scissors and now I have a perfectly squared off lovely bit of leather that when I fold it in half will be easy to find the middle and to make it a gorgeous little book with which is the next thing I'm going to do in fact um, no, let's we'll have a little pause there. So we'll give it a good crease, then we'll show you how we we'll make the inserts. So this bit for to do this, um, the the start of the booklet, um, you're going to need a little ruler, which I'm using from that little slice set again, and a pencil, a retractable pencil. Um, I find works best. An ordinary pencil if you haven't got a retractable, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to use a, an actual Sharpie, the fine point of a Sharpie, so you can see better what I'm doing. So what you're going to do is you're going to crease this, like I said, find it matches so it's really nice and even at the top and bottom. Then, take the lid off my Sharpie, hold it, pop your pen in there and just do a mark like this at the top. And then turn it round and do exactly the same at the bottom. I hope that's worked because I'm trying to do it so you can see it, not me. Okay, just flick it in right in the crease. And then hopefully when you open it up, can I see a mark? Um, I think I can. If you can't see it, just do it again just to make sure. Okay, I'm going to do it so I can see it here. Because I need that to be able to line it up. And if you, uh, when you first one or two, I would use a lighter fabric so that you can see that it's trickier on a dark fabric. In fact, I have used a dark fabric in one of them and I used a white gel pen. Right, now line them up and then draw a line right down the centre. What's that? Oh, you know what, I might as well just use the pencil. I don't think this is showing up very well at all. Could be the fact that my Sharpie's nearly dry. Oh, there, you can just see it. Okay? Now, the next thing you're going to do is um, I have trimmed down the measuring as much as possible. So, this is as much as I'm going to do. I've got two centimetres from the top and I've used this steel rod so I can put it right to the side. And I'm going to do a little mark here. Thus, okay? Then I'm going to do two centimetres from the bottom 
right to the edge of the rule and there's my other mark and then in between the two marks I'm measuring and I want a midway point now it's just over 10 so I'm just going to drag it down a little bit it doesn't matter if it's not exactly straight as long as you put the holes in your little signatures at the same point it doesn't that's fine so we'll put the five and by the signatures I mean those little folded booklets of paper right now they're bigger and they're more bold than you would want them to be necessarily you just want them to, to be able to see so um, where you would use a pencil now so I'm going to take a mat um, even if you know what I have used as well is even just the foam you know on I've been using this to poke through if you haven't got a mat this will work fine but um, as soon as I have this I might as well use it and I'm going to pop the um, a pokey tool right through like that and the good thing is about these little kits is you get one of these with it which is fab couldn't believe me look when I looked into everything I needed was there okay so pop them there so you've got three holes now that's ready now all ready to play for the next bit you won't be able to see them very much which is what we want but they're there next part is to make the inserts now like I say, I, I'll measure as little as is possibly necessary. So here's how I marked my inserts out. I took a piece of copy paper. Now I'll measure the inserts I use for my books, but you know they might all be slightly different sizes. So here's what I did. I just folded some copy paper in half. Thus. Yeah, like that. And then... I looked at the size of my book and I trimmed it so I'm going to trim that now so it's roughly the size of so there's my bit of copy paper now this can be used as a template from now on once I get the size right so what I'm doing is I'm just going to take it down so it's just what's that oh you know I mean would that be three millimeters per chance nearly four millimeters waiting for the thumbs of the cameraman it's not happening and then the same at the bottom and then that's going to be my next trim mark see how I'm just really determined I'm not going to measure All right now this is where it gets trickier because it's like making an insert for a cord if you're a paper crafter this bit's fine look there okay we've got that top and bottom okay now I wouldn't do it any more than that that's the most I would do usually I haven't made it quite as much as that now what you've got to think of is you're going to do three little booklets in there so if you make it the same distance here which is going to be about there is it not by eye that's that's not going to be enough at the edge to cover these little inserts because this fold out the side at the crease is going to expand so you need to make it a little bit further in so let's try about there once you've got your first one done, if you're going to do them all about roughly about that size, then you're fine. So, what I'm going to do is trim that, and you'll see the proportion is quite different to the, to the proportion of your cover. It's much narrower, but that's necessary, so that when you get the little booklets in, they're still hidden by this little, little overhang there. Okay? Now, you're going to use that as your template and what I would do is if you want to write on the measurements and I've done one of those which I'll show you shortly um, and keep that as your template from now on if that's the size you're going to do okay but I'm not sure what size you're going to do so that's just, that's what I did to get my original template and then you're going to take some nicer paper something like a um, you know like a um, not a parchment like a vellum or a, a like a concrete kind of laid writing paper or even a cartridge paper and you're going to cut them into booklets if it's a thicker uh, booklet if it's a thicker paper you're going to cut it so you have booklets of three and you're going to do something like this and fold them in half and use a bone folder fold them all together this is a thinner paper but I, so I have one two three four pieces of paper in that one but I wouldn't do any more than that so three or four so you've got them doubled up into six or eight little booklets like this and cut them to that size and then we will meet again so what I've got now are my three little signatures voila now just to make sure before you start sewing everything in pop these into the crease of your book 
shove them right into the crease and fold it fold it closed and if you can see your cover has has hidden the inserts then you know you're good you're good for size if it's sticking out a little bit um, then you might have to trim them down just a little bit more all right but um and actually if you do need to do that um, I found that if you use that big guillotine, you know the huge one I was using, you can actually trim through the whole thing carefully just in one fell swoop so you don't have to open them, just slice straight through it. So we've got those ready. Now one other little thing before we sew this together, which I think gives that cover a nice little finish, which I probably should have shown you before this, but I just remembered, is if you use a corner punch, I'm using again, um, I should have shares and X cut really, shouldn't I? But I've used a little um, one of these corner punches, and it's a narrow corner. It's not the, it's not the, the, you know, it's quite cute. So pop that on there, and you know what? Believe it or not, even though it's bonded to um, fabric, it's often that that's just needs a little bit of a snip there. But you know what? It's been snipping straight through the other time. But if it does need to need a little bit of a trim, that's no big deal. But let's try this side. Pop it in there. Yeah, you know what, I haven't even got that butted up to the corner. I'm trying to do it so you can see it, not so much me. So can you see it? Finishes are off great. If you find there's a tiny little jagged edge um, and you're thinking, well, I can't trim it any closer, just get a tiny little bit of your tacky glue and just pop it on the edge and that'll just get rid of those little frayed bits if there's any little bits showing through. Um, so we might as well do the other ones. Voila. Okay, so I think that just gives that a nice finish. Okay, right now we have the line, we have the dots. What you're going to do is you're going to take one of your signatures, let's take that one, and you're going to line it up by eye, top and bottom, up against that line you've drawn. Okay, so just centre it, top and bottom. And you're going to take your mark again. So this would be a pencil, but again it's my pen and I'm going to go straight from the from the hole you've made and just make a little mark there. And there. Oop, not as far as that. It slipped, but if it was pencil it wouldn't matter. Okay, so you've got a line. Then we're going to open that up Keep it nice and straight, they'll open it up carefully so you don't get it all off centre and move the pages around. You're going to take your cushion, your padded foam base and your pokey tool and rather than to the side of the, even though you've marked to the side of the line, pop the hole right in the crease. Okay, that's your first signature and that's ready to sew now. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So I have my thread, which is a linen thread. Um, like I say, I don't sew. You've probably got more idea than I have of what you're looking for. But I, I chose this because it was nice and thick, really strong. And it looks kind of like it's going to blend in with the colour of the, of the natural leather looking. So linen thread. And I used a darning needle again. Um, I wasn't sure what I was buying, I bought a few and this seems to work nicely because I don't want to form new holes so it's got like a rounded point so it kind of prevents you from doing that and it's got a big eye so I can thread that nicely and I've got a pretty long bit of the thread there like that oh, I don't know how long, what's that? Mm, three quarters of a metre? I don't know, something like that and I'm going to open the book thus, the signature and the book I'm going to sort of line them up if I can, like that, and I'm going to start from the outside and I'm going to pop my needle through the middle and through the middle hole of the signature and I'm going to pull that through but I'm going to leave a good little tail there, I'll need that to tie, okay, so I've got about that much. When you get a little bit more used to it, you can have a little bit less than that if you want. Or if you're going to want to put charms on it, you can leave it a bit longer. It's an option you've got, I'll show you later. Got that? And then you're going to turn it over and we're going to go from the top 
just make sure you, you're not creating new holes. If your book comes apart a little bit, just give it a little bit of jiggle so that they get back um, into alignment. And then out through the top. You see it's just a little bit wonky. You've got nothing to support it at this stage, so it is going to move around a bit. So turn it over. So now it's coming out the top. You've still got your little tail in the middle. And I'm going to turn it around. And now I'm going to go back. Let me see where I put that hole. Right, there it is. You know what? There it is. Okay, and then through the corresponding hole in your signatures. Then back like that. And then back through. This is all bits of glue that's flaking <laughs> that I had stuck to my finger when we did the cover. Nice. And then out through there. Okay, so that's going to be your stitching. Now it's really loose, so be careful at this stage because there's nothing, it's not supported in any way, shape, or form. Now you see this line that goes right up from the top to the bottom? Yeah, that line of thread. What you want is you want one piece at one side and one at the other. So if you just pop your thread underneath there and then hold them both. Actually, we can cut that little bit extra off now where the needle is because I'm not going to need that. Hold it and give it a really good tug. What you don't want to do is do this and pull it. Because if you do that and pull really hard, you're going to make that hole larger. And you're going to weaken there. So just pull it up straight, nice and tight. So when you look in your book, you go, Woo, look at me, it's starting to look like a book. How cool. And then you're going to do one of these, it's like the brownie knot. The one thing I learned from brownies was this. I didn't get my gymnastics badge because I fell on my head. So, but this I did come away with two weeks later when I gave it up as a bad job. So, right thread over left and under and just pull it tight. Then left over right and under and give it a good tug. Now, that's enough to hold it, but me being me, I like to do another couple of those. And even though you see the knot a bit more, you don't see the knot if you leave it at that, but I don't care because then it just looks more hand done, if you see the knot a little bit. Okay, and then again, that and that, under. And then what you're gonna do is snip really close to that but not don't cut the the, the um the knot so really close with this fine scissors and just give it a snip and that there now is the start of your book that's your first what you call this signature so your little group of pages okay now to do the second one it's really easy I'm not going to show you the sewing again because you, you've seen that you take another one of your signatures and you're going to line it up against that one really put it up to the edges and line it up really well take your marker again and go from there again and make a little mark okay now at the same time rather than measure I'm going to make another series of three holes next to it here's the thing if you make it too far out your, your signatures look too far spaced when you open your book if you make it too close, you can run the risk of it being weak because one little hole might merge into the next little hole, if you know what I mean. Yeah? So I'm just going to do that right next to it. What's that? It's about two millimetres, maybe? And you're going to then get back to your little... You know what? Look, I've just been using this. Let's just do this again. This is just as easy. Pop that there. There and there, and you're gonna do. I'm gonna need to do this as well. So same thing again. There. There. It's 
worth being careful and take your time here because it's all about the finish here. It's like when you make cards, if your mat and layering is in straight and you know and squared off in right angles, your eye goes straight to it. And now I'm going to do exactly the same with another, um, with some more thread and just sew that other signature in exactly the same. When I've done that, I've turned it over, I'll get the last signature. Oh, oh, never mind. And I'll pop that there and I'll mark it. Now, one question, um, one, one, um, actually, Fiona, I mean, we're, we're having to play with this. So, why don't you just mark your dots at the very start? Well, I like to, be, depends how thick these signatures are going to be. If they're really thick, you're going to have to space your dots out a little bit more, if you know what I mean. If they're not as thick, you want to come a little bit closer. So I just find it just as easy just to do this. So then you get into the habit of that's the pattern. Okay, so you've got your dots. You're going to you're gonna pop your dot there. You're going to pop your dot there. And you're going to pop your dot there. But don't get confused. That's the last signature. And that's the front signature. This would have been sewn in. And then, what you're going to be left with when you've tied all those little knots, is you're going to be left with a book. Like this one. As you can see, it's a really, this is the one with the dark interior that I used the white gel pen on. And you've got your nice little inserts there. So there's your first signature, look so. On. There's your second signature, and there's your third signature. And this little gap here. Um, if you want to knit them together, you, the holes would have to be closer. But that's where I said you would run the risk of um, weakening the the four leather cover, even leather. You would, you know, if you got two dots together, finally, eventually they'll merge into one. So um, actually, could have put more paper through there because there's plenty of room in between those two to expand. So have a bit play with it. I think. I think that's it other than to say if you want to leave the threads long you know the threads that you came out or even just the center thread you can maybe plait them or knot them and put some little charms on there it looks really cool if you do I'm sure you'll ask me if you've got any questions but that's that's it and I think they look fab and um, the last thing to show you is if I'll show you how to make that little button fastener if you want me to show you that Okay, so here we've got a couple of books and we can make a little fastener for them. Um, so I'm going to show you how. Okay, what you're going to want is a decent sized button. Uh, what size is it? Oh, you know what? Why do I keep saying these? Less than an inch. A little bit less than an inch. You can see, that's the size. And you're going to want some one millimetre elastic. I do know that because that's what I had to order when I ordered it. Yay. And um, what you're going to do is you're going to measure it, so, and I'll show you how, worked out a little formula to show you this. So, you're going to want, hold it like this, right, so you're going to wrap it around once, twice, don't stretch it, and then two and a half, like that, or two and a quarter. So around twice and then just half of the front of the book, and sun it, and that should be about the right length that you want it to be. May as well, since I've got the blue one, may as well do this blue button. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to go, oh, of course I have got one with small holes, right, bear with. We'll change it to the red. Okay, I'm going to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up through the hole like that leaving just about that much down through the other one if this is, gets a little bit ragged or you know if I was using that button with the smaller holes pop up a little bit of your glue on and let it dry and it'll make it much easier to thread in and out and then down so you're just making a little cross like that okay and then I'm going to take the end of my elastic and I'm going to leave it like that, so I've got a long bit and a short bit. Okay, and I'm going to go again right over left and under. Then left over right and under. 
and I'm going to get that close to that as possible and just give it a good tug. Okay, and then that should hold that really nice and tight now, but we don't want these long bits showing, so we'll just snip them off. I like, quite like mixing up the buttons on the colours of the books actually so and just so you can see it better I'll show you on the blue book so here we go like that so this will show you how to tie your book if you want to pop some little receipts or other little bits in there or if you're making a little mini scrapbook and it gets a bit thicker little boasting book whatever and then you've got your little cute little funky tie as well and then when you change books you can just take that off there when you're reading it oh we'll just take it off there and just pop it on your wrist or whatever do your thing blah 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 write some meaningful deep and meaningful things in there and then you're good to go now the other thing I was going to mention is when you are finished using your book yourself you can instead of wasting the cover it's still good to go just snip the threads and take those in those little signatures out and put some fresh ones in well oh, you know it should be so easy it's really simple it isn't quantum physics is it there you go hopefully you're going to be um making a few of these little babies for your gifts etc and having jolly good fun and the good thing i love about it is it's not exactly dead expensive you know how cheap and cheerful the feather was to make um the most the biggest expense is your fabric seriously have fun and again go to sheena TV for any information on television shows, workshops, where to find the products, galleries, links to videos, etc. I thank you and I'll see you next time.